Economic hardship, NLC protest, hunger, poverty, insecurity amidst government plea for understanding. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. Organized labor under the leadership of Comrade Joe Ajero on Tuesday made bold its threat to stage a protest over the continued hunger, poverty, and insecurity that have caused serious hardship on the citizenry despite the government's plea to show understanding. The Nigeria Labor Congress, together with other affiliated bodies, started the march in the early hours of Tuesday from the headquarters. This is the level of hunger in this country. We refuse to protest to tell the government of the world that they are hunger. It is important that all of us take country home. That this is not just a symbolic rally. But it is a rally to signal to the people in authority that there is problem in the land. People are dying of hunger. People are dying of all the issues we've had before, we set up as we see the former president. And that nothing has happened to this moment. We are here once again to tell you that Manga is the stronger in the land. But that was why she told us over 70,000. The labor leader on behalf of Nigerians also made some demands, which included the full implementation of the welfare provisions as contained in Chapter 2 of the Constitution as amended by making the provisions justiciable. In his response, the representative of the leadership of the National Assembly and Chairman Senate Committee on Labor, while assuring that the leadership of the National Assembly is aware of the hardship being faced by Nigerians, assuring them that the National Assembly will interface with the executive to address the situation. The government has intervened on this The government has intervened on transportation. If there was a measure on transportation, even before the, the next subsidy, where you have three vehicles or two vehicles for one time together, the cost of food stuff will not be too high. When you can move your food stuff from the bush to the town, they are transportation money. And you don't see in transportation, everything went high. I think governments will realize that they believe in this. That the very moment we talk the price of the government products, everything is here in change. And on behalf of the leadership of the National Assembly, we collect, collect your matter. We understand, we feel our problem. We feel what we feel. We want to tell you that this matter. We will be discussed immediately at the plenary session. The leadership of the National Assembly is what we see. Joining us to discuss this is the Chief Operating Officer, People's Daily Newspaper, Ahmed Bello, and Secretary, uh, and also joining us is the former advisor to Vice President Atiku Abubakar, Frank Shuaib. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Let me start with you, Amit. Uh, at, least, okay. at least I want to believe that uh, you, your position is not going to be that partisan. What is your take of, uh, of Labour's uh, a match yesterday, and uh, how successful would you say it was? 
and what would you uh, want to believe uh, would be the impression it must have left with the government? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very glad to be part of this program. And uh, uh, going by what uh, the NLC said, uh, they have achieved their aim in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the protest which uh, they staged uh, on the first day. And then uh, the first, it was not necessary for them to proceed to the second day because, uh, you know, what they wanted to achieve in the two-day warning protest had been achieved in one day. So uh, what uh, one understands from that is that they have been able to communicate to the authorities uh, the pains Nigerians are going through, the harsh economic conditions under which uh, Nigerians are living in, and the demands that the labor has made on how to mitigate these conditions. Uh, well, the ball is now in the court of the government to see whether they are going to uh, uh, toe the line of labor to implement some of the suggestions that labor has made uh, and I believe that both the government and the labor are, 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 are both Nigerians, and then they will want uh, uh, to see a situation where the country you know, thrives. So I believe that uh, hopefully the government will listen to the case made by labor and then uh, you know, uh, implement some of the suggestions they have made. And the ones they know they cannot implement, uh, maybe they have to sit on the same table, on the table with the labor, so that there will be a common ground. Uh, but uh, so far, the, from what we have seen in the reports of newspapers and television and radio, uh, Labour has uh, driven home its demands and then the government uh, has uh, listened to them. So we now look forward to uh, what action the government is going to take on the demands made by Labour. But so far, uh, so good. Uh, Dr. Shwaib. I know it is natural for you to have uh, a partisan slant to it, but it's al almost inevitable to also uh, want to know how you people are thinking in your camp. Uh, what's your take of not only Labour's protestation, but the general circumstance that the country is in now uh, socioeconomically? Dr. Schwab, you, you, you need to omit your device. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you. Beautiful. I, said, I think um, it is misplaced and uh, somewhat unprofessional because if you feel that I'm going to be in the studio on a national TV like yours, on a big platform like yours, to offer a partisan view, then I don't think I have a reason to be in the studio. Because hunger does not understand any language. Hunger does not understand politics. Hunger does not understand partisanship. Hunger is hunger anywhere. A man who is hungry in the PDP is the same as a man who is hungry in the APC. There is no market in Nigeria that is meant for APC uh, members and another one for the PDP members. So it, it becomes preposterous for anyone to, 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 to believe and to state on a platform like this to say, oh, you know that my, my, my position may have a partisan slant. It has nothing to do with partisanship. I am first a Nigerian. Number two, I am not a former spokesman to the former vice president of Nigeria. I am, I am, I am an advisor on public communication to the former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I've held that position since 2018. So two things I, I'm, I'm sure I have taken care of. But um, I'm saying this because of, uh, in, because of the future. You know, if, you, if I'm going to be invited to discuss in, in, in national malaise, a national problem like hunger and poverty in the land that has attracted labor, the, the, the Nigerian Labor Congress to mobilize Nigerians to go to the street, then we should discuss as Nigerians. I'm only privileged, it's only a matter of service for me to be working for the former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That said, hunger is hunger. Number one, I want to state clearly and unambiguously that in the first place, if President Tinubu does not kill Nigerians, hunger will kill Nigerians. Hunger will kill Nigerians if President Tinubu does not kill Nigerians. So, and this must be driven home. The book of Proverbs 29 verse 2 is clear and unambiguous. It says, when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, of course, the people will groan, the people will... We, we cry, the people will gnash their teeth and all of that. So it is about bad leadership. 
bad leadership. So if it is about bad leadership, what are we going to talk about? If you're saying, oh, the, 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 the Nigerian Labour Congress organized a march in, Nigeria, in, in Lagos yesterday, and ordinarily they've driven home their point. How many times have they driven home their point? Only a few weeks ago, a document purportedly signed, a memo purportedly signed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria made its way into the public space where it was succinctly captured that the Secretary to Government of the Federation, in the midst of hunger and poverty, made a request of one billion naira, one billion naira of our collective patrimony, taxpayers' money, to be released for, the, to, uh, for him to organize a meeting with organized labor to discuss minimum wage. Of course, the president of, your, of my country graciously approved the release of 500 million naira for, for such a conduct, for such a jamboree when the people are hungry. You understand me? So it is reckless. It is tendentiously wicked. It is, un it is, it is bad. It is unheard of. And we can't continue like this. For a government that came into power, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu promised Nigerians. I remember sometime during the campaign when he said, oh, when he gets to power, he's going to recruit about 50,000 young people, you know, to, to go into farming. Some of them will go into, into the military and all of that. And that is how he was going to check, he was going to check poverty. It, and one of the functions as well, you know, he made mention clearly at, uh, too, that look, he was not going to discuss his strategy to check poverty in Nigeria because he didn't want the opposition to, to copy his, his business plan and his plans for Nigeria. And we, some of us began to wonder, now that he has become president, this is not time for politicking, this is time for governance. So if this is the strategy he has been keeping to his chest, that he didn't want his opponents to copy, then it becomes laughable. You don't forget, too, that only a few weeks ago, a few months ago, a female banker committed suicide within a banking hall, within a banking hall in Nigeria, within a banking hall in Nigeria, owing to poverty and hunger. Don't forget, too, that the National um, Psychiatric Hospital in Lagos, the director, the head of that institution, was captured in the media to have said in clear and unambiguous terms that in the last seven and a half months, that is within the span of when President Bola Tinubu took over till now, the number of psychiatric patients has risen by over 100%. You know, hunger can make people to go mad. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Is this about politics? Is it about being, being partisan? The facts are clear and unambiguous. So we cannot joke with the issue of hunger. Hunger does not understand any language. Poverty is poverty anyway. A man who is hungry in Zampara is the same as a man who is hungry in your studio in Lagos there. Would, would, so it this be, is the issue. would it be proper for me to expect somebody as senior as you are in the camp of the most respected opposition leader in Nigeria to be proffering ideas for solution or the things that you people would have done differently. Would that be, would, would, would be proper for me? Yes, very, very well, very well. Only a few days ago, we counseled the president of my country. We gave him a counsel. We said, Mr. President, you took over power on 29th of May, 2003. The president of Argentina took over power on the 10th of December 2023, six months after you took over power. The economy of Argentina was worse than the economy of Nigeria at the time the president of Argentina took over power. My dear brother, the president of Argentina sold the, all, the, all the aircrafts in the presidential fleet. He started flying on business class on commercial aircraft. But in my country, the children of my president jumped on our presidential jets from, from, to, to attend birthday parties in different parts of the world. That is the issue. Now we run what we call the largest cabinet in the history of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He has created more ministries, he has more ministers in office, and for God's sake, you cannot say that, 
Hold on. Uh, okay, Doctor. Doctor Frank Shai. Doctor Frank Shai, I'll come back to you. I want you to be thinking through these two points before I come back to you. One is the fact that you are factually right that the president of Argentina has taken some of the biggest uh, some of the biggest cost uh, cost cutting measures in the yeah. history of governors anywhere in the world. However, some of the policies he has taken too, especially removal of subsidy, just like the removal of subsidy, has taken Argentina now down, down the abyss of about 200 plus inflationary trend. That's yes. number one. But you are factually right that he's dramatically cutting the cost, uh, the cost of government. But having said that too, and I want you, this is the second point I want you to be thinking about before I get back to you. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria too has taken the courage to at least instruct the setting up of a committee for the implementation of the Oronsonye report that about three administrations from the time that your principal was the vice president seemed to have dilly-dallied on. Uh, but I'll come back to you on those two, uh, but let me go to, let, let me go to uh, Dr. Amid. In the interim, we also, we also have joining us uh, a functional National Publicity Secretary of, uh, of Labour Party. Uh, Dr. Abayomi Arabambi. Um, Dr. Arabambi, we will bring you into the picture later. But um, Dr. Ahmed. Yes, please. Are you still there? I'm here. I, 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 I know uh, Dr. Frank Shaib was a bit uh, exasperated with the fact that I said I was hoping that naturally his opinion was going to be a bit... Uh, uh, slanted partisan, uh, partisanly, yeah. uh, but you are my fellow journalist, and I want to believe uh, without any partisan disposition on, in so much as it's factually right in all the allusions and references is made, I still have to cut the balance with somebody like you. Um, what is your general take of the situation in the country ranging from socioeconomic the socioeconomic sphere to security to the direction of governance to uh, just your take yeah uh to begin with uh the government of uh, president bola ahmed Tidubu, uh took a major decision uh, economically by removing fuel subsidy, which previous governments tried to do, but they were not able to do. Uh, not only Tinubu, even the, the key presidential candidates of the major parties, like uh, the PDP and the Labour Party, also uh, made promises to Nigerians that they were going to remove subsidy. And now here comes a president, Bola Tinubu, who has proceeded to actualize all those promises made by all the other uh, candidates. But uh, as it were, uh, it does appear that uh, the removal of subsidy has uh, ushered in some complications in the economy, uh, which the government says uh, it is addressing by taking uh, uh, policy measures to mitigate the removal of subsidy. But it does appear that the removal of subsidy has, uh, you know, uh, instigated or uh, brought about the kind of hardship that we have now, coupled with the the, the, the economic uh, downturn in the the devaluation of our currency, and then the, with the foreign uh, Dr. exchange Amit. Uh, complications. Doctor Amit, you know? so, Doctor Amit, yes, yes. Doctor Amit, yes. let me quickly interject. Uh, yeah. The removal of subsidy. The removal of subsidy was actually canvassed by all the three major presidential that candidates. Is what I'm but having that said that, I, I agree with you. But having said that, 
having said that, uh, on assumption of power coming to office, the incumbent president, President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, did not only remove subsidy, yes. he also floated the currency. And the yes. two policies, the two dramatic, structurally, uh, stru structurally fundamental policies came into being at the same time. At the same would time. You, would you think that the two other principal candidates in the last presidential elections would have done it uh, the dramatic way and the seemingly, um, the seemingly, oh, let me just say the dramatic way he did it. Would you want to believe they would have done it the same way? Well, what we do not know is that uh, we don't know the strategy that uh, the the PDP candidate Atiku and then the Labour Party candidate Peter B, the strategy that uh, they will have adopted uh, to address the removal of subsidy. But it does appear that uh, Tinubu is taking his time, but uh, that time that he's taking uh, somehow is not giving Nigerians commensurate uh, relief as a result of the removal of the fuel subsidy. Uh, sorry, yeah, removal of subsidy. So what people are saying is that, in fact, uh, you under harsh tone, people are saying that government is even contemplating bringing back uh, fuel subsidy to mitigate the harsh economic conditions that Nigerians are experiencing currently. But uh, that does not seem to be credible because government has not spoken, you know, on that. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, uh, as, it, as, it's, as it is, uh, subsidy is gone for good. Subsidy is gone for good. Uh, you think subsidy we is gone? We are hoping that uh, Dr. Dr. in the Amin, coming days... The Dr. Dr. Ahmed, I'll come yeah. back to you, but I want you to be thinking about uh, uh, what the submission you've just made. How can okay. subsidy be said to have gone for good when, as a result of the depreciation of the Naira, it is now obvious that the landing cost the landing cost per liter of fuel is not what we are paying at the pump. Because the landing cost, as we speak, for a liter of fuel is about 1,200 naira. And we are paying about 620 naira. Seven, worst case scenario, in places like Maduguri and some other things, they are paying about 750 naira. So, the difference between 750 naira and 1,200 naira speaks to subsidy. How can you, as enlightened as you are, be telling the public that the, the, the subsidy has been removed for good? We are back where we were when this president came in. Be thinking about that. Let me bring in the third gentleman. I'll come to you to... to re, to give me your your retort on that on that, okay. uh, Doctor Arabambi, Doctor Arabambi, can you hear me now? I can hear you well well enough now. Thank you very much for uh, for coming on, Doctor Arabambi. I, I really don't know, I really don't know if you are competent to speak on behalf of uh, uh, the candidate of the Labour Party in the last presidential elections because of the factional, uh, the seeming condemnation of your faction by, by the candidate and, and, the, and the people loyal to him in the other faction. But uh, what is your general take of Labour's protestation yesterday uh, regarding uh, the fact that they claim that Nigerians are hungry, uh, and what is your position on the uh, socioeconomic uh, situation of the country, uh, inclusive of security? Your take, your, your opening salvo. Well, thank you very much. Um, I believe you, President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, came with these acronyms of a renewed hope. Agenda for a renewed hope. And all of us know that uh, a feeling of expectation or desire for a particular thing to happen is 
what we call O. So a new is coming to renew our O that has been damaged by the previous administration. Because nobody gave the APC that slogan. Nobody gave them the acronym, but, but they just said, you know, agenda for a renewed hope. So, a new app is issue that we are very hopeless. Economically, financially, security-wise, Nigeria is a hopeless situation. And he now, he came around now to say, oh, I want to renew that hope, you know, for Nigeria. But like I said, uh, other than that, other than what you said, you know, regarding our issues with NLC or Peter B, the point is, labor is not just laying claim. They are saying what is factual because Nigeria presently, we are at the crossroads. And that renewal, you know, seems to be fading away and the president must now come out and be decisive. Even if it means to probe the body administration, who was using Nigeria income, 95% of our income to service the debt, to service debt, not payment. A president who chooses to produce Naira and all of them were starting dollar. I think the president must be decisive because where you have, just like my brother said there, that you know what you know, a, I mean, a banker did. It was in this country that we were told it was the cousin of Mr. President that ordered the resigning of Naira. It was this country that a particular woman in the CBN took $300 million of Nigeria money to go and invest in, in a bank so that they can take over, you know, Union Bank. We are in a very hopeless situation, even though not caused by him, but it might be decisive. Everyone that brought up to this level needs to be brought to book. This is not politics. So my for, brother in the PDP has said the right thing. Even you know, I mean the that uh, this uh, my uh, hello, Dr. Arabambi, Dr. Arabambi, Dr. Yes. Arabambi, you are you know putting your putting your hand on your chest. You are telling Nigerians that uh, you believe that is not the cause of the seemingly extenuating circumstance that we find ourselves in in the backdrop of the fact that it was the one that uh, brought into place the, the dramatic removal of subsidy and the dramatic floating of, of the Naira, which, is, uh, which, uh, which spurred the lack of confidence in the market that is, making the money, that is making the Naira to be losing value as we speak. For you, it, 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 it has no fault for the two, for those uh, two policies. Now, what I mean is this: I said he came with a renewal of agenda. He knew ab initio that Nigeria doesn't have any hope when he came in, and he said he want to come and renew it. So he need to now get back to the drawing board and do the needful about it. It was in their own administration. President Mohamed Tinubu secretly sponsored President Mohamed Buhari during their primary. Secretly sponsored that man into, into governance. And look at how President Buhari battered our economy. And he now came and said, don't worry, trust me, I can renew that hope for we Nigeria. But like I said, the hope is fading away. But oh, before okay. Nigeria... Okay, okay. thank you very back. much. Uh, let, me go, uh, let me go back to Dr. Uh, Frank Shuaib. Uh, uh, Dr. Shuaib, in view of the way I, I left you uh, the last time you, know, you, you, you spoke, I, I, I said that you must also come to the realization that in so much as some of the allusions you made about uh, President Mille of Argentina is true regarding his court courting measures, which is not so distant from what President Tinumbu uh, did with subsidy removal, uh, you will agree with me that in the same way, President Millet's measures have taken Argentina down the abyss of 200% inflationary trend, 
number one. And number two, you said, rightfully so, that Doctor, uh, that President Millet uh, has been cutting excess in governance, the cost of governance. And I said, uh, Doctor, uh, President Tinumbu is equally, has equally instituted the Committee for the Implementation of the Orosoye Report. How would you respond to the two in the backdrop of the points you made before, uh, before I, I went to your colleagues? To well, as intelligent as you are, I know that what Tinubu is doing is diametric, is completely different from what President Mele has done in Argentina. Number one, what he's doing is putting the heart before the cat before the horse. The president of Argentina didn't wake up to remove something. He started the reforms. He, he brought, he started, he, he took measures before starting the reforms. In our own case in Nigeria, we are doing we started reforms. He woke up one day, single-handed. Announced the removal of fuel subsidy. But the issue is this Has the fuel subsidy been removed? On your own, you answer that question. There is an opaque and secret diversion of money, all in the name of removal of fuel subsidy by the present leadership of Nigeria. He cannot tell me that they, they have removed subsidy. And that's why I'm shocked, I'm in deep shock that, um, that my colleague in the studio, and funnily enough, you know, he referred to him as your colleague, forgetting that I've been in the same media industry for 27 years. But that notwithstanding, of course, I, I agree with you that I should have in my ass because I work for Atiku Abubakar. But the issue is simple. Like I said, hunger is hunger anywhere in the world. Question is this, has subsidy been removed? The answer is no. It smacks of wretched illiteracy for anybody to contemplate that the, the subsidy has been removed by President Bola and that he removed it. In one moment, you on your own, you said that, look, a man cannot say he removes subsidy on petroleum products and petrol sells at a stagnated figure or oscillates between 640 and 680 naira per liter. While diesel, as I speak to you as of yesterday in my house, I sent money to my team at home and I know that they bought diesel at 1,700 uh, 1, naira per liter. Now, if they are buying diesel, how do you explain a situation where petrol remains at a constant or a near constant figure while the cost of diesel keeps rising? It smacks of, you know, it's illiteracy. That is a, a balabonomics or bulabanomics. You understand? Because I don't understand that kind of economic, uh, uh, economic uh, terminology. The CBN governor, as well as the Minister of Finance, claims that, oh, it was based on their, their sterling performance in their various fields that they were so appointed as minister and governor of the central bank, respectively. But they have not been able to do anything magical, the kind of magic they claim they did in Lagos. The question is this. Don't forget, too, that the International Monetary Fund, in their latest report, stated clearly that the amount of subsidy being paid by the current administration is far and above what Muhammad Buhari paid while he was president of Nigeria. Bola Metinubu, who is president of my country, cannot divorce himself from the administration of, of uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari. He was the leader of that political party. He was the leader of the party. Dr. Shoaib. You all hold on, please. Uh, hold hello, on. Sir. With profound respect to you, we are discussing economy. Uh, hello, sir. And I want to uh, hello, sir. Uh, hello, hello, hold hello. On, hello. We, we are discussing. We are, discussing, we, we are yes. discussing economics, but the facts, too, must be put uh, out rightly. Your yes. principal... Well, the leader of the party of, of the APC. Your, your principal to, was I one of those... Yes. Your principal yes. was in the same camp and was one of yes. those who helped to bring about the presidency of Buhari, too. We must factor we that in. No, no, no. It's, it's see, a historical fact. Respect. You see, if you are in the studio, if you are in the studio to discuss on that, we are not running elections. My principal is not is not at the moment contesting election. We are talking of a man. It's just like asking. Let me ask you a question. It's just yeah, you are. You, you see, you are assisting them. Like, what they are doing is called enablement, criminal enablement. Enablement in the sense that an Akada rider, a man who is an expertise, who has an expertise in riding a motorcycle decided to, 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 to seize a car at gunpoint 
and he doesn't know how to drive a car. How will he, when he now eventually takes the car, how will he drive it home? That is the point we are. The man is stranded. He needs help. He needs help. So you cannot begin to tell me about how my principal assisted them, the APC, to install uh, Muhammad Buhari at that time. No. Seeking office is different from uh, administering a country. A complex country like Nigeria requires leadership that is constructive, leadership that is detailed, leadership that is deliberate. A man said, announced on the first day he was sworn in, that he has removed fuel subsidy. On your own, you have admitted in this truth that there is still fuel subsidy. There is an opaque and secret diversion. If they say there is no fuel subsidy, it means that the president and his team are stealing money from Nigeria through the secret subsidy. Because there is no way, no way a president of a country, there is no country in the world that says that, look, we have removed fuel subsidy and the cost of fuel is not being determined by the market forces of demand and supply. Uh, you, you keep no, dwelling on that. So what it, about, it, it, you keep yeah, dwelling so, on that. So, you made that point and that point is no, well made. I made it, you interjected. You came in, you see, you, you uh, are... No, I, I, I post two oh, questions no, to you. Whether you work for... No, no, no. You see, no, you no, I post two questions to you. You, no, no, you no, kept I dwelling not, on one. You know why we not, you know why we not help you to respond to those questions? I will not help you because you are practically you are practically doing the job of the APC in the studio. You 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 know you started by saying, look, you I'm here. I, 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 you you know that you cannot get a non-partisan position from me. And honestly, if this is the first time I'm going to get that from Plus TV because I've been honoring invitations from Plus TV. I had several meetings to attend to today, uh, but I, I honored that this invitation because of Plus TV. Uh, I but the, because the I, I, I made my point on that. So in this matter, with profound respect to you, in this matter, you cannot, you cannot approbate and reprobate at the same time. You cannot. You don't have that power. The issue is simple. In the same studio, you have said that, look, this man has not removed sources. So we, the problem is that this I man is not, uh, 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 I mean, You Dr. understand me? They are confused. Dr. Shahib, calm so down. Is, calm down. Yes. Calm down. Let's I'm listen. Here. Let's I'm listen to let, Let's I'm listen to ourselves. Calm. You, I was the one that post. I was the one that post a question to one of your colleagues yes. that if he claims that subsidy has been removed, how yes. would he? And I'm going back to him to answer it. You don't and need to that, go back to him hello, because it is public hello, knowledge. Hello. It is public knowledge. You don't need to go back to him. Hello. Even, see, even a three-year-old, hold on, with profound response. Uh, even a three-year-old knows uh, that. Wait, wait. Knows that. A man says he has removed subsidy and the price of fuel. As you sit here, before you got to this studio, in leaving your house to get to the studio, I know how much you spent in getting fuel. The issue is simple. I know the number of messages on your phone asking for urgent 2,000 men, urgent 1,000 men. The number of pressure, the amount of pressure that is on you as a TV presenter, because they see you on TV, they believe you have so much money. Meanwhile, you have your, you have your own issues to deal with. We know the pressure everybody is getting in this country. The question is, this government has no direction. Till this moment, they are still struggling. So comparing them with the president of Argentina, who started this before starting his reforms, what would we have done different? We have so much we would have done different. We would have put, in stru put structures in place. We, I, we, even I, when Atiku proposed, then the former vice president proposed that, look, I was going to remove first sources. He put that, you can read our, our, our documents, my covenant with the people. He said clearly, we will start our reforms systematically. It is going to be in stages. We're not going to just wake up and remove fuel subsidy without planning. A man who fails to plan, we has already planned to fail. This is the issue. Oh, okay. We uh, attended all debates. Can I come but in? But our good friend who is president failed to speak to the people. So why would you not come up with what we are receiving today? Can I come in now? Please do. You are, you, are, you are free to make all the points you want to make. Uh, but I need to make two clarifications. Number one. Please go ahead. Number one, you are a nationally and internationally visible character as a prominent advisor of the former vice president. So yes. if, if when I was introducing you and I wanted to ask you a question, I, yes. I, I, and I said I would rather go to a gentleman who would not be perceived to have partisan slanting. 
It was not because I wanted to be disrespectful. To, uh, well, let me make my point. The, no, no, hold on, hold on. The word perceived was not... You can play back this video after this production. My, my brother... You did not my, my use brother, the word perceived. I said... You did not use I said... It. And that, that gave it a different you, slant. You may need... We will send you... We will send you the recording. I will send you the recording. Because I said it could be said that you would have a partisan slant. And it's rest, it, does not, it does not take anything away from you. Because you are proud of your support of Atiku, you believe in him, so how could that be an insult? Or why are you... Uh, you seem to be emotional about it as though it was said condescendingly or disrespectfully. It was not meant to be that. That's number one. Number two is that yeah. When I was trying to tell you a while ago that the point you were making regarding subsidy was logical and that you have made that point alone, I said I asked you two questions. One was the issue regarding the inconsistency in the logic of removal of subsidy and the fact that the landing cost relative to the pump price these days speaks to uh, subsidy. Uh, but having said that, I said I also asked you that yes. three previous administrations, including yes. the one that your principal served in, toyed around the Orosoye report. But like President Millet, but like President Millet of Argentina, he has now instituted a committee with the view to implementing re reducing the cost of governance. I said I my wanted dear, you to approach my, that. My, 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 my dear brother. You, this, then this, you, this you went ahead, you went ahead no, to call no, me an NPC no, apologist in this story. No, no, my dear brother, the question has answers on its own. You don't even need the services of a clairvoyant to hazard a guess to what the answer to that question should be. Here is a man who... Okay, let me come back to you on that. Let me come back to you on that because you've got colleagues. And I have to give them equal opportunity. No, no, no. Just, no, no, no. You will, I will come back to you, my word of honor. Let me, let me I will come back point. to you. You took too much on the subsidy. You dwell no too problem. much on that subsidy no, issue. No problem. That I will no come problem. back. Have your, have your uh, Dr. Amit, you see the problem yes, you, you put me into now? You see the problem you put me into with Dr. Frank Shuaib, <laughs> who is now, you know, lacerating me emotionally and intellectually because... You know, Frank Shuaib Frank <laughs> is uh, playing politics uh, without playing politics, you know? <laughs> okay. Dr. Frank Shuaib, Dr. Uh, Frank Shuaib uh, reasonably uh, believes that you've been too <laughs> generous in your submission of the, in your submission uh, that the the president has removed subsidy in the backdrop of the reality that on the one hand the measure the ill judgment that brought about the measure supposedly I want to believe that that was the point he was making that the ill judgment that brought about the measure seemed to have caused the economic trauma that people are facing now, but that ironically and paradoxically, subsidy, according to IMF, which he rightly referred to, is uh, the, the cost of subsidy is even higher. How would you want to respond to, to well, that Well, the point I was making initially, I was beginning from a, a fundamental premise, which is that the three key presidential uh, aspir I mean, candidates of the major parties the APC, the PDP, and the Labour Party, each one of them, you know, adopted a position to remove fuel subsidy if they were elected. But since they were not elected, we don't have an opportunity to see how they were going to implement the aftermath of fuel subsidy. Now, we have uh, a case in our hand now. The current president has uh, succeeded in removing the subsidy. But we're beginning to see some complications uh, that are, are playing out. Uh, but the hunger that is being talked about is affecting everybody in the country. But I am not too sure whether the hunger we're experiencing now is solely as a result of the removal of web subsidy. Because we have a major problem of insecurity. Farmers cannot go to their farms to produce food as a result of insecurity. 
we have the foreign exchange complication, which is affecting our monetary policies and are also affecting uh, the, the spending power of Nigeria. You know? And then we have uh, a whole lot of uh, you know, factors you know, that are really uh, giving rise to the economic condition which we find ourselves, which is why we are, uh, Nigerians are getting hungry every day. So this is the point I, I was trying to make, actually. Uh, no problem. Maybe perhaps if uh, Atiku uh, had become president, we would have had an opportunity to see the pragmatic approach he was going to make to address uh, fuel subsidy if he eventually removes it. That was, uh, that, that was the point Amin. I was trying to make. Dr. Amin, yes, I'll, I'll yes. come back to you. Uh, but uh, before, I, before I go to Dr. Arabambi, uh, I want you to be thinking through the fact that, and I agree with you, that uh, insecurity may have also complicated uh, the cost of food uh, because farmers have been... Uh, farmers have been encumbered from easily assessing uh, their farmsteads. I, but I also would like, when I come back to you, for you to think through on whose table does the buck stop when it comes to fighting insecurity. However, Dr. Arabambi, I'll come back to you on that. Don't worry. Okay, that's fine. Uh, right. Dr. Dr. Arabambi, uh, we... We have a confluence of the, of the many ugly factors. Many ugly factors. Uh, Dr. Frank Shaib rightfully believes that removal of subsidy and the ill judgment in the uh, pronouncement of the floating of the currency uh, may have been the primary causes that have that have led us, led us down this abyss. Uh, Dr. Amid is of the opinion that uh, uh, notwithstanding the fact that all the three, uh, the three principal candidates or three major candidates promised they were going to remove subsidy, at least we can only empirically uh, you know, examine what the incumbent is doing but he also came up now with a picture of insecurity, how insecurity is further uh, complicating uh, the socioeconomic circumstances that we find ourselves in. Dr. Arabambi, what is your take? And what will be, let's be moving in the direction of positing advice now. What will be the advice that will come from, from your from your faction of the Labour Party to ameliorating this unfortunate circumstance that we find ourselves in. Uh, and I'll be doing this around, uh, <clears throat> around the three of you. Your take, Dr. Arabani. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I have advised the President to send uh, what we call executive order, you know, that we introduce capital punishment for fraudulent Nigeria who have decided, you know, to consider, to consider themselves as economic predators in Nigeria. Do you know that a barrel of food oil, once it's brought for refining, you have a residual gas there, you have kerosene, you have bitumen, you have this aviation, you have gasoline, you have diesel. But everybody will come back to Nigeria with petrol. Now, a vessel laden with maybe 50,000 liters of crude oil will not come back to Nigeria. The question is, where are the other components? And the cheapest, do you know that this oil is very cheap to refine because at their boiling point, asphalt and bitumen, where do they deposit them to? People will just take our crude oil and they will not come back with this their narrative. Oh, uh, the landing cost to this thing is higher than how much you gave me. It is all fraud. I agree with my two brothers in the house, but the point remains there is a demi corruption in Nigeria that must be caught. How will people okay, divide like Dr. Adam 75,000 naira? Dr. Adam Adam Nigeria will be committing suicide. And a government will sit down to give one billion 
to some individual to determine how much Nigeria will hand. Ordinarily, the person that wrote that letter ought to have been executed in a similar country. For uh, you Dr. to Dr. have that one billion the limit of some people. Dr. Arabambi, no, you are about some other opinion, please. No, no, you are, you, are, you, are, you are a Democrat. No. You, you are a Democrat. No, I, no, I want no, to I'm believe sorry. that as the spokesperson Demo, know, of a Democratic know, Party. <clears throat> With due respect to you, mm. the way we are part of our democracy, we are not deceiving ourselves. Except we take the people by we have a disappointing uh, 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 I mean, constitution where a man that still go to Nigeria will go to see about imprisonment, but go and steal 11 billion. The judge will ask you to pay 1 million or 20 million as fine. You'll be, the best will be convicted, but you are going to pay 20 million. And you go scot free. But somebody that stole, that stole a mudra of Gary will go to six months imprisonment. Oh, okay. Except President uh, let, me, let me give your colleagues. Right let me give your colleagues the opportunity. <laughs> let me give your colleagues the opportunity to wrap up, too. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arabambi. Uh, Dr. Frank Chuaib, uh, you know. Your you, you are free with your opinion. Uh, I hope to you, I am an APC apologist, but having said that, I still have a duty. I have a duty to let you, <laughs> you know, you have, you, have, you, have, you have tagged me as an APC apologist, but you know what? I still have a duty to let you respond to the comparison I did between uh, the, the likely implementation of the Orational Report and the, and the measure of President Millet, and whatever suggestion you may have, because at the end of the day, this is the only country that we can claim to be ours, and we all want solution. How would you want to wrap it up in about, in about one minute, please? Well, the truth of the matter is that you are the one who has canonized yourself as an apologist of the APC. No, you called me. You called me. Don't worry. Friend, it comes to the territory. Friend, it does happen. And my brother, and I, I will not offer an apology on TV, on TV. You understand? The truth is this. With profound respect to you, as always, mm -hmm. you know, um, I commend very strongly uh, the language of uh, the, uh, my brother from uh, People's Daily as well as uh, Labour Party. But the truth is this. While even trying to look at that comparison, like I said earlier, you cannot, there are two different things. President Bola Tinubu started work without planning. There are also your reports, you understand me? Ordinarily, ordinarily, should be the first thing a man will think of when he's trying to cut costs of governance. You say you want to remove subsidy. But the cabinet we have today, the actions he has taken so thus far is diametrically opposed to the actions he's taking now. So it makes no sense. It is just a clear display of kabu kabu economic policy. He doesn't know what he's doing. It's, it's just one chance. It's, it's like a one is running a government as the one chance boss. You understand me? What would we have done uh, differently? Like my brother in the People's Daily was asking, or oh, maybe because Tinubu is in power now, that is why we don't know what Atuku would have done differently. The former vice president would have done so much differently. And I'm shocked that as a journalist, he didn't know that we had a working document. What Atiku would have done differently as it relates to subsidy is encapsulated in his working document, my covenant with the people. And in that document, he said, look, subsidy will be removed in stages. Look at, let me give you an example. Look at what is happening to Dangote Refinery. He's been finding it difficult. Difficult. He's struggling to get the needed crude oil. Okay. You understand me? He has to, imp he has to import crude oil from the United States of America. Yet, the NMPC took a loan of 3.3 billion US dollars from Afex Bank and gave our crude in exchange. How do you now expect the same economy to be stable? Is it possible? Oh, okay. You oh, cannot oh, be oh, doing one okay, thing and, and, be, and be mismanaging another sector recklessly. These people are running kabu kabu economic policies. And we have advised them, we have spoken. You are talking about the Argentine situation. Oh, okay, yes, okay, Dr. Dr. Schreib, you my made brother, your point. My brother, let, me give your, let me give your colleague, Dr. Hamid, the opportunity to wrap up too. The time <laughs> is not time. But uh, if you, I know, but before I go, I am Frank Schreibu. Today again, I will complain as well. Remove the doctor from my name because I know you have a college of two academics. Oh, academic so, so, I'm sorry. not a doctor. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I've always, you know, uh, uh, it's something about me, some, something about you. I've always believed 
that you have a you know you have a PhD, but uh, uh, I will get there. For... I will get. There. I'm a teacher. I don't have a PhD. Ah, thank <laughs> you, thank you very much. Because I I know thank at you. some point you were you were lecturing uh, at the tertiary institution, but thank far, you very much for back, the correction. Far back as 1996, I've ah, been teaching. Well taken, mm. uh, Dr. Amit. You, you took yes, some please. you took some body shots from. Uh, from Shuaib, <laughs> who believes that because he has left our phone <laughs> as a practicing journalist, uh, he, he, we are now his punching bag. You know, it comes with the territory. We take it in good, with equanimity. But how would you want yes. to wrap it up? The two doctors today, uh, they are really dealing on uh, so The two politicians, they are really dealing yeah. on some. But let me give you the opportunity to wrap it up. In about yes, 30 seconds. Yes. You, you spoke earlier about... Uh, responsibility for insecurity in the country and then uh, you are expecting me to uh, run one or two comments on that Rapport i think that, security please. security matter is uh, principally responsibility of the federal government of nigeria except now we have an opportunity where uh, the government is trying to come up with a state police where each of the states of the country can have uh, a police that is run by the state government uh, if that comes on board uh, we're likely to see a synergy between police in the state and police at the center so that perhaps may, you know, contribute to mitigating or bringing down the level of insecurity in Nigeria. Uh, Dr. Amit, yeah, I think uh, that is uh, what Dr. I want to say. Dr. Amit, the backroom boys are really hard on me. I want to say thank you yeah. to you. Uh, Dr. Arabambi, I want to say thank you for a good show. I, I'm a bit shocked that a Democrat could be calling for a military-like uh, firing squad or execution, but it's your opinion. You are free to hold yours. And uh, Frank Shaib, the <laughs> one of the prominent advisors of the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, and I don't think that is anything disgraceful, I say thank you too for gracing the show. Thank you, I'm honored to be here, and I would love to return again, because there, we left so many things on set. Nigeria belongs to all of us. We will, you will hunger, always have more opportunities. Everywhere. You will always have more opportunities. Any one of you will always have more opportunities here. Thank you. This is where we wrap right, it up you. for today. Uh, thank you for keeping watch with us. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening.